welcome to this episode of Hangout with uh, the Mandeville Prophet. Today we're going to be looking at a very salient future as it relates to the prophetic ministry. The prophetic ministry is a ministry that is very dear to my heart. Not only because I'm a prophetic prophet for over 20 decades now, but because I have an understanding, I have an assignment to teach and to mentor the next emerging prophets to the next generation. A generation that is taught is a generation that is strong. When we look into what is happening in the body of Christ, there are a lot of misnomers and aberrations. Not because the gift of God is not authentic, but because the operators are not grounded in the scriptural ways of operating this heavenly servitude. So today, I'm going to be looking at the subject, the difference between the office of a prophet and the gift of prophecy. A lot of believers means, you know, a lot of believers seems to misconstrue the two. The office of a prophet is not the same thing as the gift of prophecy. Before we go on, I'm going to be taking a foundational text from Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. Just a word playing foundation. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. The Bible said, And Jesus gave some apostles, he gave some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. And verse, and verse uh, 10. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. One of the reasons why I love the scripture is because the scripture does not keep us in the dark concerning God's counsel and what he wants us to do and how he wants us to operate his gifting and his ministry. The reason why there is a lot of confusion, aberration, rape on the integrity of the prophetic ministry is because people do not know how to draw their boundaries or rather they don't know how to operate these gifts that God has gifted us with. Hannah thanking God in the book of 1 Samuel, he said, For God is a God of knowledge, and by it actions are weighed. The most powerful blessings a man of God, especially those who are called into the prophetic ministry, will enjoy is knowledge, wisdom, ability to know why you do what you do, ability to know how to do what you are doing, and the reason and you know, knowing what to do. So we're going to be going straight to the point. What are the perceivable distinctions between the office of a core prophet and that of the simple gift of prophecy? Because a lot of people jam it together. They don't know when which one is working. And that at the end causes a lot of you know, problems in the body of Christ. Most of my teaching is going to be coming from my book. I wrote this book well over 15 years now, The Mandated Prophet. This book has gone viral. In case you need it, just indicate in the comment section. My team will find a way to get it across to you. This book is all inclusive with everything that has to do the prophet ministry, your training, your impartation, and how to walk along the other five foot team in order to administer your gift with grace and with glory. So most of the things we're going to be sharing today, I'm going to be taking an excerpt from what I wrote in this book. So, for the subject in view, what is the distinction between the office of a prophet and the gift of prophecy? Number one, the office of a prophet is a life calling, either from birth or after being born again. Whereas the gift of prophecy is a gift given by God. You don't earn it, it is received. So the office of a prophet is an endowment. It is a life ordination. You don't call yourself into it. God initiates the ordination and pours the oil. And practically, it could begin from the birth, 
Yes, it can begin from the bad, but you've been on a war of it. At the light of salvation, you begin to operate it. Or after salvation. If you look at Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, say, I, the Lord, has ordained thee. You don't ordain yourself. God ordains you into his office. No man taketh this call unto himself except the one that is called, just like Aaron was called. Before I knew thee, before I gave birth to thee, I ordained thee a prophet unto nation. So the office of a prophet is an ordination that comes upon a believer either from the womb or after uh, salvation experience. Whereas the gift of prophecy is a gift given by God. Every believer at the point of salvation and baptism of the Holy Spirit, there can be an act activation. And these gifts, apart from the gift of prophecy, are nine in number. And the gift of prophecy comes under the classification called the utterance gift. Why is it referred to as utterance gift? It simply means a gift that says something. So the gift of prophecy is a gift that says something. Like I said, the office of a prophet is an ordination by God, either from the womb or after salvation experience. Whereas the gift of prophecy is a gift. Is a gift given by God to every believer that will covet it and desire it. That's number one. You know, a lot of people cross the boundaries of grace. God will never give you empowerment beyond the provision of grace upon your life. The reason why a lot of people struggle is because they are operating in the offices that God didn't give them grace or they didn't call them. If you begin to arrogate yourself oil, and some certain privileges by grace that God didn't give to you, you are going to struggle at most. You will be stagnated and be frustrated. You will be running the office, but you will not have physical proof. Remember, wisdom is justified by proofs. The proof that an oil is upon you is measured by the attendant giftings and proofs and results that authenticate that office. So, number one, the office of a prophet is a divine calling, is an ordination from God to a man. Whereas the gift of prophecy is a gift given to every believer and it can be activated at the point of baptism in the Holy Ghost and then you begin to manifest it or any other of the nine gifts. Number two, the office of a prophet is not asked for or prayed for. It's not, it doesn't say God make me a prophet. No. It is God that takes the decision. It is God that calls. He is the one that anoints and he is the one that puts you. Remember, no one taketh this honor unto himself. So this honor of being called into the office of a prophet must be bestowed on you by God. You don't call yourself to be a prophet. God calls you to be a prophet. But the gift of prophecy can be converted. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, convert to prophesy, which means it can be asked for. A believer can convert any of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit in prayer. Lord, breathe upon me and from the embers of my spirit, let there be an area, activation of these nine gifts of the Spirit that is lying fallow. You can do that in the place of intensity of hunger, you can say, God, let there be an activation. Let there be a flow of one or two or three of the, or even the completion of the nine gifts of the Spirit to operate. But when it comes to the office of a prophet, it is not something you ask. You, have no, you don't have power to ask for it. God, by His prerogative power, decides whom He sets into the office, and He puts His grace and anointing about such fellow in order to operate it. So you see, we have a lot of issues. People who are called as prophets, many of them don't even know the consecrations and how to activate it. Those who operate under the simple gift of prophecy, they extend the boundaries of the operation and they go into a place where the devil will manipulate them or open them up to the portals of the familiar spirit. That is the reason why, that is where we have issues. But I believe that this telecast today 
is going to checkmate our desires and cause every man to measure in his measure and to minor in his minor. Let everyone magnify his office wherein he is called by God. Let's give attention to the ministries that God has given to us. You know, one of the reasons why people have this operation is competitive jealousy. You should be fulfilled and happy in whatever area God has called you. Remember, it's fivefold ministry, the office of an evangelist, that of a prophet, apostle, teacher, and pastors. In fact, in Nigeria today, the people with the greatest work are not even prophets. They are apostles with proven ministry of teaching that knowledge. So why the competition? You can maximize your potential in the place God has called you. Give attention, like Colossians 417. I challenge the archipels. Give attention to the ministry that I have received from God, not the ministry another man has received. Give attention to the ministry God has given to you so that I might fulfill it. Until you give that ministry attention, you might not fulfill it. So, that's another reason why there's a lot of errors in the body of Christ. Because people are not comfortable with the level of grace God has given them per time. One thing is sure, as you prove faithful in the little measure of grace, there is always a possibility of God magnifying that office and giving it visible expression. Praise the Lord. Number two, the office of the prophet is one of the five ministerial governmental offices in the church. So the office of a prophet or the calling of a, of a prophet is an office. When we talk about office, just think of the, 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 the presidency. It's an office. And in that office, there are statutory powers that pack this operation. That is presidential authority and power. The seal of an American president is as powerful as the utterances of the American president. So that is an office. It's not just something you just go in and operate. No. So it's part of the five governmental offices as described in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. But the gift of prophecy is one of the nine gifts of the prophecy. We have the gift of word of knowledge, word of wisdom. We have the healing gifts, the gift of faith, the sound of spirit, speaking in tongues, and, and diverse gifts. There are nine in number. Nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And under one of the basic classification of these gifts, the simple gift of prophecy came under the gift of, of utterance because they say something. So the, uh, the, the calling of a prophet is being said in an office, whereas the simple gift of prophets is a gift in operation. Another distinction between the office of a prophet and the simple gift of prophecy. The message from the prophet is deep with revelational, correctional, and directional content. Very powerful. Glory to the Lord. The message from the prophet is deep with revelational, correctional, and directional content. Whereas the gift of prophecy is only for three things. Edification. Exhortation and comfort. I will explain. What I'm trying to establish is the fact that the dimension and the glory and the power that drives messages for the office of a prophet is very deep. At times it comes with revelation, at times it comes with correction, rebuke, and at times it can give direction, even destiny definition. So it transcends the reign of comfort, edification, and exaltation. It's deep. It gives direction. We saw when Prophet Agabus, Prophet Agabus is one of the New Testament prophets who signify by revelation that there's going to be famine in the land and the, the disciples gather relief in preparation. We saw in 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 in, in first Samuel the encounter with first Samuel and the encounter between Saul and Samuel. Remember, Saul came looking for the the father's missing dog, uh, missing ass. But by word of knowledge, by word of knowledge, the prophet told him, "No, what you are looking for has been found." But there was an insight 
into the prophetic future. That is the authority of the prophecy that comes from prophet. It comes with such accuracy, power, and depth that hell cannot resist. And a prophet in this operation must be a teacher, he must be a preacher, or both. And then he must have word of knowledge or word of wisdom operating in his ministry plus the gift of prophecy. So each time a genuine prophet functions from that office, there's always a word of knowledge, there's always a word of wisdom. Word of knowledge is a revelation of things that have happened in the past or that is currently happening. Whereas word of wisdom is a prophetic insight into the plans of God concerning a man or a nation. So a prophet of present this gift plus the selling of the spirit or the physical speaking of that gift which is prophecy. So another major distinction between the office of a prophet and the gift of prophecy is that a prophet carries authority in delivery. Some components of his instruction might be directional, correctional, or revelational. But the gift of prophecy operates on three solid platforms. It brings edification, that is to build the sense of. It brings exaltation, that is to call near. It brings comfort, that is to cheer up. That is the simplicity upon which that operation travels. Each time a dimension of message begins to bring or talk about what has happened in the past or now or begin to try to predict the future, it has crossed the boundaries of simple gift of prophecy. It is the office of a prophet that is in operation. So people who are calling to this office overstretch their faith and when you overstretch your faith in a place where God has not given you assignment, you will confirm the word. So you should be able to know per time where God has called you and the scope of grace made at that level. You say, let he that has the word of God prophesy and let him that has dream take his dream. What is a chaff you know, you know, compared to, 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 to the real thing? So we must all our, our God's operation. I'm not saying that the office of a prophet is more powerful than this. All is for the glorification of Christ. And what I'm trying to say is that there must be decency, there must be knowledge. We are knowledge is not known. Abuse is inevitable. Well, what the reason why we have these problems in the body of Christ is because of well, is God expressing Himself in different forms and dimension. Every child of God must operate the gift of God. But in the operation, you must have an understanding where you are called and the demands of what you are called to do. So uh, the, the, the revelation that comes from the office of a prophet carries authority and it, it might have correctional intent, revelational intent, or directional intent. But the operation or the message that comes from the simple gift of prophecy built on three things, comfort, edification, and exaltation. Continuing, another distinction between the office of a prophet and the gift of prophecy. The office of the prophet is like an ocean of revelation. Whereas the gift of prophecy is like a bucket of water from the ocean of revelation. For example, you need to have, there is a difference between a billionaire and a just person, a normal person that has money. For you to be a billionaire, you need to have much more money in the dimension of the man you are investing, you are investing to look like. So going to the ocean and carrying a bucket of water out of it could be likely to simple gift of prophecy. But the ocean on its own could be likened to the abundance of revelation that comes to the ministry. Practically, God deals majorly with the prophets in revelation. Revelation of the world and the visions of the world. He speaks to them categorically, depicting and speaking concerning times and of season. Another major distinction is that the office of the prophet equips the saints to do the work of the ministry. A prophet, according to the designation of the Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 10 11, the intent of being placed in the body as part of the governmental ministry is to equip the saints. What do I mean? 
I mean that a prophet must teach the word. Run away from any prophet who do who is not at home with the minister of the word. Acts chapter 6 verse 4. The early disciples, part of them were apostles and prophets. They said, May we shall give ourselves continually to the ministry of the word and prayer. A prophet on the pulpit without the word of God is a pulpit. Run away from every prophet who has so much supernatural and little of the world, we need to re-examine his ministry. Because it is inconsistent with biblical pattern. The New Testament prophet must be a solid teacher because he is part of the foundational laying stone of the church. The Bible said the stone, the foundation was laid on the stone, the, the, the apostles and the prophets Christ being the cornerstone. So, a prophet, a new creation prophet, a New Testament prophet, must be a solid teacher or preacher or both of the word. For equipping, there's no other way you can mature the sense into the work of ministry. Of course, you need to know that it is the sense that we are called to do the work of the ministry. So, the responsibility of the prophet is to train is to mentor, is to equip, is to model and raise so that they can be able to fulfill their respective ministries in Christ. So the gift of prophecy brings out the best in others. What does that mean? For example, in a prayer meeting, somebody is down, depressed, and suddenly a word comes from either inspired written logos, please. Be happy, be joyful, for out of your belly shall flow. The person feels good. The person is momentarily blessed. The person is momentarily helped by the simple gift of prophecy. Maybe somebody is afraid, not knowing what might befall him, and suddenly somebody speaks a word of prophecy from the gallery and says, Do not be afraid. I am with you. I shall be with you. And all that. That is simple word of prophecy in operation. Whereas the calling of a prophet is for the equipping of the saints until Christ-like maturity is groomed in them, is matured in them. That is why it makes a misfit of the ministry. We, we are every meeting is prophecy. Every meeting is not prophecy. In fact, the will of God for every meeting is not prophecy. God places the word before the gift. God places the word before the gift. Look at Genesis 1, look at 5 verse, look, look at Luke 5 verse 17. Genesis 1 says that the Spirit of God was moving, could be likened to a gift of the Spirit, and there was no manifestation until there was a word activated, voice activated option. That is how the supernatural is designed. In Luke chapter 5 verse 17, the Bible said as Jesus was teaching and preaching, the power, so the power is being activated by the ministry of the word. Every minute, I'm not saying if you are led to prophesy, you will not prophesy, but make sure even after prophesying, let people live with tangible realities of the revelation of God's word that can mature them and equip them in their daily work with Christ. So the simple gift of prophecy just makes somebody, you know, it strengthens your faith, it comforts you, possibly in the midst of certain uh, uncertainties. Praise the Lord. Another major distinction, the grace, the grace the prophet carries help people to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. That is powerful. Anyone who is saved, whereas in the gift of prophecy, anyone who is saved and has received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, can prophesy when moved by the Holy Spirit. But in the office of a prophet, it can help people. What we mean by that is creating the atmosphere of the prophetic. It's possible that you've never prophesied before and you come under the cloud of a solid prophet, your prophetic tentacles are open. For example, if you go back to what transcribed between Saul when he came to the heel of the Lord, the Bible said that we are prophets, that we are prophesying. Saul had not, been, had not been prophesying. There was no record in the scripture that Saul has ever given prophecy. But immediately he came under the cloud of that prophetic association. There was a quickened activation and he too. So, prophets carries 
a transferable mantle. Oh, you don't need, you didn't understand. I said, prophets carrying a transferable mantle. What that means is that there can be a quickening and activation. Paul said something that is very unique. He said in Romans chapter 1, I think verse 11, he said, For I love to see thee, that I might impart unto you some spiritual gifting so that, so that you might be established. Josh, not Joshua, Deuteronomy 34 verse 9. The Bible says Joshua the son of Noah was filled with the spirit of wisdom. Everyone who is called majorly in the office of a prophet carries an impartational, activational function. So Saul came under that atmosphere and instantly he began to prophesy. Prophets can teach, activate, and mentor people. I've written severally. But my master class on this is coming up later in the year. I'm going to keep you posted. You can fly in. God has given me rich syllables as it relates to the prophetic ministry. That the office I operate as a prophet seer, a teacher, an apostle with a ministry of supernatural in cycled under instrument mandate. So this is my flow. This is my life. I've done this for years. So I know what I'm talking about. So the prophet carried grace for teaching, for mentorship, for impartation. But the gift of prophecy is, av is available to every believer and it can be activated as the spirit moves. When the spirit moves, there can be an activation and the person that is filled with the Holy Ghost can prophesy. As I begin to tidy up, one more distinction. A prophet is a calling that gives an identity. What I mean by that is that the prophet is not different from his gifting. The prophet and his gifting is one, and that prophet is a gift to the church. But in the office of the, of the simple gift of prophecy, to minister in prophecy is a gift that gives you ability. What that means, that what that means is that you can prophesy and not being a prophet. But a prophet, who is the office of a prophet, is a prophet and is a gift to the body. The Spirit of God can come upon you and you prophesy, but that does not make you a prophet. In the office of a prophet, the oil abides. The ordination is authentic. Praise the Lord. So the prophet and his prophecy, both of them, they are a gift. What do I mean? It is pertinent to point out that when a person ministers in the gift of prophecy, the gift is the ability to prophesy. The gift is the ability to say, Thus says the Lord. The words themselves are the gift. However, it's different when a prophet is ministering. When a person is a prophet, they themselves are the gift. The person, remember Ephesians 4 said, and he gave gifts to men. So that gift he gave to the body of Christ. Amen. So a prophet is a gift to the church. A prophet is a gift to the church. So, ladies and gentlemen, I believe it's been an awesome time on this platform as I begin to sum it up. Major in your major and minor in your minor. Every gifting, every ordination, is to the intent that Christ be glorified and the source of sinners be restored back to the heart of our Father. It does not matter the area in ministry God has called you. All I'm conversing for is that we should do it in understanding. Most folks don't even know there's a distinction between the Old Testament. Maybe in my next episode, I'm going to be taking a look at that. The distinction between the Old, the, the old Covenant prophets and the New Covenant prophet. They shed blood on cross has altered the operation. You don't be a new creation prophet and you are sounding and operating like an Old Testament prophet. Yeah, both can see, both can operate in the word of knowledge, but at heart something has happened. So ladies and gentlemen, I believe you've been blessed by this telecast. Please comment, uh, share your views, share the video. Until next time as I come on this platform, we take it further. I ask that God's grace be multiplied. If you call in the prophetic, I ask you will not go to bow for power. You wait on God for consecration. It takes God years to produce a genuine prophet. You are passing through process. Don't give up. 
have a record of the prophecies that God has given to you. Look for mature men in this office to mentor you, possibly lay hands on you, live pure. Be a husband of one wife. Make sure you read the Bible. Be patient with people. Don't curse people. A New Testament prophet does not curse. If you are a cursing prophet, you've not met Christ. May God's grace abound with you until I see you some other time. Keep shooting. I love you all. Thank you.